stay up high so you can see nice little bedding spots in here trail here let them get through here we'll bust around the other side here see if there's any water down here we can get across deer little buck little buck well we flushed a few three of them sitting tight just like pheasants that's the way it goes in these deals it's amazing how close you can get to these bucks yeah good try Welcome to a postcard from the edge. Question is, the edge of what and where? One look at this landscape and you might think it's southern Arizona. The eastern cape of South Africa? Maybe the Sonoran Desert of Mexico? Hmm. Try the plains of Colorado. About an hour and a half east of Denver to be exact, it's a land of yucca and cedar and rocks. I mean lots of rocks. But it's also a land of mule deer, really big mule deer. And if there is a part of the planet that gives me a good deer hunting vibe, it's Eastern Colorado. Chris and I, this will be the third hunt we've had together hunting mule deer. First hunt we had, I thought was kind of staged to be one of our finest years ever for trophy mule deer in Eastern Colorado. And a freak storm came in the day before the season and put about 22 inches to 24 inches of snow on the ground. We ended up kind of bagging that first year. So he came back the next year and dang, opening morning, we didn't just luck out and find a gorgeous buck feeding down in a little creek bottom just off an alfalfa field. Just a gorgeous, deep fork buck. Get on him, make the shot. Oh. And I think Chris got a little bit of the bite of that bug, and he said, you know, the next time I get an opportunity, I'm going to come back and hunt deer with you guys. And it was interesting. Last year, we shot that buck. Those bucks were with the does. Yeah. Right at the same time. Yeah. And this year, um, we haven't seen a buck with the does except the little bucks, which that's pretty much common. You know, they're always going to be with the does. I tell you, the, the rut just seems late there this year. It's really a land of opportunity and it's a mixed bag kind of opportunity. You can go after mule deer, you can go after whitetails with the same tag. It's really incredible what this state offers, but you look at that country and just think, there's no way there's big trophy animals out here. So it's, it's arid, it's, there's very little vegetation, but I tell you what, it produces and it produces big time. You can't glass this little spot right here from anywhere. Unless you're right over there where they see you. Great little ambush spot. It is. All does. Cedar cover here. Nooks and crannies everywhere. Just perfect. We know where the does are. We just gotta find Mr. Big. God, what a great canyon though. Oof. That's where I'd be if I were a muley. It's like a little grand canyon grown to scale down there. Yep. You know, Russ McLennan's ranch out here, I, mean, I describe it as the Badlands of Colorado. I mean, it's amazing to think you've got this kind of landscape in Eastern Colorado. Big ravines, big canyons, and those big canyons and big ravines are holding gigantic bucks. You bird hunt this kind of stuff and you flush them right out. You're just like a pheasant almost, they're coming out of your feet. There is, of course, an element of luck in taking any trophy, but more often than not, it's about the miles you put in rather than the happenstance. That's especially true in the vast landscape where a buck can hide jackrabbit-like behind any yucca, cedar, or boulder. Hunting here can sometimes seem like panning for a five ounce gold nugget, but sift through enough of this country and you'll eventually strike it rich. I see him. We worked into one canyon. Russ was glassing, he said, there's a good buck, there's another lesser buck. I got a good look at his side. He's a good split fork buck with good mass. Gee, I hate to hear that. <laughs> we got all the way around to the head of this canyon. We knew there was a buck bedded down in there. We just didn't know, was it the big one or was it the lesser buck? We're gonna come right over the top. He's gonna be right below us. It's gonna happen fast. Got him. 20 yards underneath me, this buck comes shooting out of there. Just a nice young four by five. Wow, that was cool. That was him. That's what you do in this kind of country, which is why it's so much fun to hunt. Not the first time a buck's given me the slip. Nope. I suspect it won't be the last time. You gotta quit training these deer out here, Russ. Didn't I put in for the dumb ones? You know, there's something about mule deer. I mean, they're these impossibly wide racks. I mean, they're stunning deer. And as soon as you see one of those just behemoth, big, tall, heavy, wide bucks that bound off, once you drink that Kool-Aid, you want more. It is still pretty warm, but it might work to our advantage. It's been warm all day. Well, they gotta move at some point. Yep. You would think. Day three, we've covered, it seems like, the, the whole landscape, and you feel like you've looked at every little draw that's out there and... Could be anywhere. We started working our way down a draw, and, and we saw him before he saw us. Big buck. It's a pretty deer. 
Is he broken? I can't tell Chris from this angle. He just looks, I mean, he's, he's got great mass. No, I mean, he's a stud buck if he's, if he's not busted up. I, can't, I just can't see that left side. He shouldn't be busted up yet. I mean, not, not rutting yet. He could see us, I'm pretty sure, but he was also pretty confident that if he didn't move, we hadn't seen him, and he did not move an inch. We could just keep kind of creeping like we don't even see him, and I think he might hang a little bit. Yeah, he looks like he's pretty safe right there, doesn't he? We can get above him, don't you think? What is he, about 350 right there? 337. I think we can drop down to our left and go over the top there. Let's do that. Okay. Do that. We were able to back off and and drop down across this little draw and then come up over this ridge on him. And you know, it's high drama at that point. We know he's bedded down there. We could see the whole area as we were making our move around. And every step we're taking, we're getting closer and closer and closer to, to personal history, quite frankly. I think it's gonna be a running shot. All right, well, you tell me if he's broken that whole side, then let me know. Even if he has, it's, still, pretty dang good. it's still a nice trophy. He's right ahead of us. I think he's right down here. Right. Suddenly we're within probably 50 yards, and I can see the tops of his antlers underneath the bush. Right here, right here, right here. Right here, can you see his left side? I think he's a big three. He's a good buck. All right, let's go. He's definitely, Chris, he's a good buck. The instant that I saw the tall, heavy, antenna-like antlers of that bedded buck, I had the edginess of a predator. I mean, a really hungry predator. He's gonna go. Here he goes. Oh, what a buck! Nice buck! Look at that buck! Boom, just smacked him. He was maybe 60 yards away. The drops to the shot, just a spectacular encounter. Still photographer is right over. I can hear the shutter just going as he's shooting the entire sequence. He got him! <laughs> Good job, Chris. Three days of anticipation and excitement and enjoyment all came together at once. Well, was 20 yards buck. away. Woo! Let's get a look at him, man. He's a forky all the way up. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five on one side, six. That's just a beautiful buck, man. It's not very often in your life that you have the opportunity to shoot an animal or, or to even see an animal like that of that quality and that caliber. And that buck was in his prime. Sooner or later, you just kind of knew it was going to happen. Yep. Eastern Colorado. I've taken a 200 class whitetail in Eastern Colorado. Now the biggest mule deer in my life, a 200 class mule deer, all within 50 miles of each other, which is 75 miles from my home. And I'm really happy I moved to Colorado. It's difficult to convey the satisfaction of hunting hard, working miles and miles of landscape, and culminating those efforts with a memorable shot on an epic buck. A Russian writer by the name of Ivan Turgenev had it about right when he wrote that the value of a trophy is directly proportionate to the amount of energy expended in its acquisition. Indeed, there are animals that are trophies because of their sheer dimension, then there are the beasts that live in the album of your mind as much for the moment of the encounter as for the size of the antlers. This Colorado brute will live with me for both reasons.